In example 4 on page 418, we rotate the curve y equals the square root of x with x between 0 and 4 around the x-axis. So the x-axis is our axis of revolution. And following the steps to, for finding the volume using this method, we are going to draw the region and identify the radius function. When you draw your region, make sure you include the x and y axis. Square root of x looks about like this. And we always draw some sort of an indication of what our axis of revolution is. In this case, the x-axis, y equals 0. And if you want to go ahead and sketch the solid, I was never super good at 3D drawings, but it kind of looks like the nose cone of a bullet or a rocket ship. It's also nice to label your function. Now, we always slice perpendicular to the axis of revolution, in this case perpendicular to the x-axis. And This is just any old slice. And our radius is the distance from the axis of revolution out to the curve, which in this case is this distance. And with the coordinates that we've drawn here, that distance turns out to be y. So our radius is y, and we know that y equals the square root of x. Therefore, r of x, our radius function, is the square root of x. Step 2 says to take that radius and square it. So r of x squared turns out to be x. And in step three, we're going to integrate the, integrate the volume. Now, the general formula is the integral from a to b, pi r of x squared dx. I guess it would be nice if you could see all that stuff. r of x is the square root of x, our y value. When you square r of x, you get x. And we're going to plug our information into this formula. So we get v is equal to the integral from 0 to 4 of pi x dx. Using the rules of integration, I end up with pi x squared over 2 evaluated using the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 between 0 and 4. Big F of B minus big F of A gives us pi times 16 over 2 minus 0. And this turns out to be 8 pi. So the volume is 8 pi.